clips and stuff. And so that's one way to do it. It is one way to do it. So now I just give them to my lady. You could also play D and D. That's too many sides. You, to that. you could many. also you might as well get a gym membership on that D and D. Yeah. And, and figure it out. That and now way. I'm doing treadmill, the dice, and my app work. And you're like, hey, I got an armor class of twelve. I'm gonna throw down on my body. Yeah. yeah. And then I do fifteen push-ups, and I go eighteen points damage <laughs> to my ego. <laughs> yeah, I well, I've been I've been running, I've been running. You've been running. I've been kind of okay. like I've been like if I see the hill, I'll I'll run the hill. Like up the hill. I'll run up the hill, and I'm getting I'm getting better. I'm I almost bought a track suit at Dick's. The other you mean day. like my, no not no mine's a sweat suit. You bought a track suit almost. No, I want I want to, I'm getting a, a real Adidas. I've been looking for that card. So like I used to come into Lowe's. Yeah, I just oh, oh. <laughs> or just just that one. I like the old the Wilford Brimmel, the Wilford Brimmel. <laughs> diabetes. It's, just, it's like I got diabetes. Yeah, this is like everybody's going. What the hell? That's why the do you guys even? Meow. Why does he leave this stuff in there? That's the cat's meow. No, that guy used to come into Lowe's when I was delivering for Lowe's, and I got his card. That guy. Oh, the owner. Whoever of the, the guy owner, he drove his his Tim van. Tim Pearson. His van was skinned like that. He had like a little minivan. Oh, okay. And it had all that. I'm like, hey, dude. That's kind of creepy. I get your, can I get your card? Because I figured maybe that, I don't even know. I it wasn't like I went out out like it wasn't like I knew I was going to be going to film school in the next year or whatever. Because that was 2017, and I went to film school in 2019. I smoked two joints in the morning. I smoke two joints at night. I smoke two joints in the afternoon. It makes me feel all right. Does your work know? K-N-O-W or <laughs> N-O? <laughs> uh, so that's an N-O. <laughs> that's a no. <laughs> Are they like called you in? Like, hey, we need you to come down and pee in this cup. Um, where would that be? Because... I guess there's not, like, there's not, it's not like <clears throat> you're moving machinery. Well, I work from home. I'm, the only machinery I'm moving is my hands on a keyboard. Speaking of which, I did do some stuff, though. You probably heard us active in the garage the other night. Yeah, I was like, I was surprised you didn't pop out there and be like, what the fuck? I could. I still had all my shit. (laughs) I had all that fucking cardboard because I didn't take the fucking I know recycling. And then so I couldn't get get out. And I was like in bed like and that fucking electric blanket is just like awesome. and keeps you there. Yes. Why didn't I get this like a while ago? Yeah. And then, but, but yeah, I was like, I heard you like doing stuff and I was like, what? And then like, I built some steps, uh, for the hot tub. So we don't have to, you know, hop over that thing so much. And then I cut a hole, uh, in my bathroom floor. Uh, there's like this bench that folds up and then right below that floor, the bathroom floor upstairs is the den slash dog room and laundry room. So now I have a laundry chute. I made a laundry chute. So we have a basket there so from upstairs we just drop the laundry in the dirty basket and then it's already downstairs and then we can lift it back up no more going up and down the stairs with baskets full of laundry i cut a hole in my fucking floor because i'm lazy and smart you should see it if you haven't seen it already you have to look in the den next time i'm 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 so excited i know it's just a hole that you could escape through if 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 the perps are coming and you need to get out quick i had this i had this so I was like driving around and I like was looking at these, you know, these guys that drive their little cheap Wranglers with like, I, I wonder because you like the Rubicon model. Do they think they're actually Caesar? Do they think that they're actually going to like cross the Rubicon? And like when they do, they'll oh, because of how beefed out they are yeah, for no like, fucking reason at all. Like, and they're just like. You know, and then they get the little the little headlight thingy, so it makes it look like it's pissed yeah, off. Yeah, the old KC lights. It's like, are you? You know he was killed, right? You know that he's crossing the Rubicon. Most people aren't going to understand right? that. Right? He had to cross the Rubicon and then go back to, and then he goes to Rome and takes. So did, did, did he do that after? So he defeated Hannibal first, right? Yeah. <coughs> You're asking the wrong guy. Actually, I don't. I don't know that. You don't. You don't. You don't hang out and watch ancient history. I I do, but. Uh, I don't really. I care less about you don't this watch Caesar. Bettany Hughes. I have her whole eight days of, of Rome. Isn't that one of the Looney Tunes? Bettany Hughes. No, she's like, she's got like this like crazy cleavage. Betty Bop. 
She like and she goes all over like Greece and stuff, like showing her cleavage. No, I, I, I don't know that one. And she's like, it's amazing because she's like, you, she talks, but then it's just like, you know, you have to know that that's distracting. <laughs> like, yeah. I think that's the like Aaron Brockovich, like <laughs> Julia Roberts and Aaron Brockovich. Have you seen that movie? Yeah, I don't. Apparently, it's about water or something, but I just thought it was about her tits. And what, well, it was about she was like, like everybody thought she was trashy because she was showing yeah, yeah, her yeah. stuff, and then she becomes. Well, that was the re- that was based on true story, so she was portraying you know that act uh, the the real life yeah, lady. Yeah, he was up. I think that was one of the few times where I think Soderbergh was up for both. He was. I think he was up twice. You got a nod for that one. Well, no, because tra- it was the same year Traffic came out. He had oh, two. That was a great fucking movie. He had two movies that were both Oscar contenders, mm. and he won for Traffic, I think. Well, I don't know Benicio del Toro did. That I told, makes I sense. Told the, I told the Benicio del Toro story, right? She acted the shit out of that movie. She did. She did great. No. Okay, so in the year 1999, BC. The. Uh, in the year 1999, this runner came in for this movie, for this movie, uh, uh, this movie company. There's a runner come in, and whoever's shooting behind the scenes photos, they drop off like you know five to ten rolls of you know for us to. Oh yeah, yeah. That's when you were working at the, yeah. book, and then you kept telling them, hey, these these are coming you, back, yeah, and then fuzzy or blurry, and, like, and they were using one of the old school throwback, uh, was it Russian, German or Russian the, cameras, the right? Holgos, yeah, See, I, I remember, I remember shit, Dave. Yeah, so then he like. So I'm bagging on all these photos saying that they're all like out of focus and not sharp. And it turns out that they're Benicio del Toro's and they were shooting where the gun, which we all know is the creator of Doritos. Yes, exactly. And, the and, cool ranch. Cause he's cool. And so, yeah. And details ended up doing a, they ended up doing a, an article on his photos or the, the trend of Holga. And they had some of the photos I was like bagging on. Really? Yeah. Some of the ones you actually developed, it was in probably. Magazine, yeah. And then like. That's funny. Uh, yeah, it was just it was just one of those things. It was just yeah. So um, and then yeah, he won the he won the Oscar like for traffic like that spring or whatever. Then Man, there that was, was many. That was twenty five years ago. You remember the movie uh, Crash? Yeah, like mid two two aughts, Brendan like two thousand five. Was it, that Brendan Fraser? Yeah, Brendan Fraser's in that. There's a lot. Of, Terrence he, Howard, I think. Yeah, Terrence Howard's yeah. in it. That's that was one I, of those original Terrence. twist movies where, it, like, it just keeps you. I remember like um, Morgan Freeman, Along Came a Spider, that had some good twists. Yeah. Um, I just remember there was like a theme for about a decade there of like, haha, gotcha, and heavy twist. And Crash was one of those weird movies that wasn't twist, but everything mm-hmm. was different perspective stories that all came together, and it just you're like, whoa, shit. At least. For me, that was kind of my first experience no, with I that think, type uh, of movie. Looking back, though, people are like, because I think it got, it got Picture of the Year. It, 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 it won, it like won a shit ton of awards. Like, people were like, looking back going, there were better movies, <laughs> I think, that they could have gave it. Well, the wrong. style they led with, it was all about the style. Uh, yeah, know, again, everything the, was that time where everybody wanted to be like M. Night Shyamalan. And then, like, or like that movie Memento. With uh, yeah, Pier- but that was Chris one Nolan. of my favorites. That's Chris Pierce, Nolan, uh, oh, is it Nolan? Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I love I love that did. scene where he's uh, I think it's towards the beginning. And he's like, oh, what am I doing? Oh, I'm running, and he goes, oh, I think I'm chasing this guy. <laughs> and then as he gets close to the guy, starts shooting him. And he's like, oh yeah, okay, I guess he's chasing me. I better get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love it. I haven't watched that one in a while. Right, so I got it on the DVD. Oh, I bought it in right. Korea. Most of my most of my DVD uh, collection, still because I haven't expanded it much past then, was from Korea because I got introduced something called the Military Star Card, and it was the worst thing ever. I charged that thing to the max and paid it off a total of like three or four times in my career. Really? Yes, yes. In fact, one of the things I did with my separation pay when I got out was drop seven on a Military Star Card to pay it off. Yeah, no, I I don't I I was I didn't have any credit cards. I had a star card. I think I might. I think I, I paid it off. I think before I hooked up with Jenny, in two thousand. When Jenny and I hooked up, two thousand seven. I want to say I paid it off and everything, but I never. I don't ever remember using it. I I had to because I was going through a, uh, uh, you know, divorce after fucking divorce, and it was the only way I could really. 
so my buddy, you know, my buddy, you know, Rob told me, he goes, yeah, you know, you can use the military star card. And, uh, and I go, yeah, but you can only use it on post. And he goes, uh, uh-uh. you can buy prepaid visa cards and then use those anywhere. I was like, I wish you would have never told me that. So I went and fucking just bought a ton of hundred dollar visa cards. You pay like, you know, four bucks for activation, yeah, gonna, like- but you lose a few, but you, it's a 4% loan, you know, yeah. basically one time loan on, and that's not bad. For a for hundred bucks when you don't have it. So I would buy Visa card after Visa card and just, I started balling out. And that's when I maxed it out. It went from like 1500 to like 11 grand. I bought like a really expensive Schwinn exercise bike for my apartment. All these, like, I just, I acted like I had money. Cause when you're in the army, you're like, bitch, I know I'm gonna get paycheck. Yeah, I know. You know, I, I'm, I'm comfortable with being broke. I know on the first 15th, I'm gonna be taken care of. And even if you're broke, broke, you just go crash in the barracks. I mean, there's so many ways to you can get three squares in the military all the time. Go use someone Ooh, yeah, else's social was, security number was, in the de- in the in the cafe. I never did that. Never did that. Last one. Nope. This just seems like that was a lifetime of, of a life. Rob and I would use Stevenson. Remember that fucker Stevenson we deployed with? The yeah. Book? We would use the social and go to like the defac when we got back in Colorado because we didn't have you know on post lunches <laughs> and just charge his shit. Did they, uh, did they catch it? Um, I, you know, eventually, yeah. Um, eventually, yeah. In fact, we might have been one of the ones that actually led to the change to where you couldn't just go there and punch in your last four or your social or whatever. Like, Yeah, I think I remember. Because it finally changed. Well, when I got – okay, so when <laughs> we got back, right, and then I went to – I went to Fort Lewis right when we got back, and then they deployed. So I was in the rear. What was that, 51st Sig? Yeah, something like that. that was the brigade, I think. But uh, it got so we had the one defect that was right there on the corner. Talking about Colorado? No, in, in oh, Fort Lewis. Or Fort oh. Lewis. Oh, okay. You know where the signal unit used to be? Right there. Main, it's all main post. Different talking now. about main post? Yeah, main post. Yeah, I know. Like right on the corner of yeah. the, the, the airfield. Mm-hmm. So, anyhow, there was that Literally one. everything's on the corner of the airfield. Oh, yeah, because that was a. Uh, because the defect was right next to fucking uh, PLDC, the barracks for PLDC. We shared the oh, barracks. Shit. We shared the that quad, whatever you call it, with them. Like so, yeah. So we they ended up they ended up giving us separate rats because they didn't because it was like well we have to walk because they shut that defect down because it didn't make any sense because when I went to PLDC, it was like, <coughs> why are we getting bussed over to North Fort when there's a defect right here? That's weird. You know what I mean? Like, I missed I missed Main Fort when I first got there. So check this out. When I finished Sierra School, I uh, I I haven't used a PCS to Lewis <laughs> in December of '06. When did you go to Sierra School? Uh, when it was like April '06 to like December. Yeah, November December. Yeah. Oh six. So and so I, I can't I should have been right after you then. Yeah. So I get there December of oh six, like right before Christmas. Like the t- I think it was like twenty first or twenty second. And they're like, Yeah, so just report after uh Exodus. I'm like, All right. So I come back early January and uh I go to what was four two three uh FA or, or or whatever it was. Uh and there's this guy, Staff Sergeant Bates. And I go, yeah, I'm, I'm here. I'm part of the 21st Signal Company. And he looks at me and he goes, yeah, there is no company yet. He goes, we're just building this from the ground up. It's a brand new brigade. There's like 30 something people in the brigade right then. He goes, just what's your cell phone, man? And uh, I give my cell phone <laughs> and he goes, just if I get a hold of you, you know, like respond and check in with me every few days. And I go, OK. So that was like the third of January. I didn't go into office until mid-March. Mid-March, he calls me and he's like, hey, tomorrow, come in. We finally got a plan. I had like two and a half months of sitting at the house when I first got there because there was no company stood up. No way. I swear. Then I get back, and then that's when First Sergeant Taylor was there. He was a Mass Sergeant Taylor. He just got off the uh, recruiting trail right. in Seattle or, or up, up around there, and uh, he'd been sitting in a chair for like three or four years recruiting. And then he goes, okay, yeah, so uh, it's just you guys. So it was me, Top, and Sergeant Bates, and I was just a buck sergeant. And he's like, when did you get here? And then, like, Bates looked at me, and he's like, I'm like, oh, just recently the other day. And he's like, all right, all right. So, yeah, I had, I had like, 
three and a half months off from the time I left Sierra school (laughs) to when, to when I got back. And then, so that was mid March in, uh, a couple months later, we like we we go from three or four people to about thirty or forty people. So I'm in processing people like every fucking day for a couple months, and then in uh, July, or no, it was before that. I guess it was June, mid June. We all get on a plane and fly back to fucking Fort Gordon, where I just left a few months ago for cohort, <laughs> and we stayed in hotels in Augusta, Georgia, for like three months. And Top and Ev- Commander LT, they were all at a double tree, real bougie, by the mall in Augusta. I was in the Overflow Hotel, the shittier one, uh, but it was me in charge as a buck sergeant, like two more NCOs yeah. and a bunch of soldiers. We had two vans to ourselves, so no oversight. So every fucking day, we would just get hammered by the pool, like after school. Like we'd have classes in the morning, <laughs> afternoon. We'd come back and get hammered by the pool and just party, party, party. Yeah. We had so much shit there. Like one of our NCOs got busted uh, for using the government travel card to order like hookers and online gambling and stuff. Oh, that was you guys. Yeah, yeah. We got right. Ra- <laughs> you heard about that. Yeah. And uh, another time uh, no, we I had remember, like the I... police or SWAT team call us because we were fucking around yeah. playing paintball uh in the dark around the hotel. And someone thought people were running around with actual rifles and guns and stuff and called the cops. And so two of our guys almost got shot and uh, we got held up at gun wow. by the police. It was a great time, man. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think when I when I went to because I went a year after you and then I went right to Kuwait. And so when I got to when I got the Arabs, well, we got to what are you all? Oli Ali 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 When we got there, um, so we we go to like we go to we get to Arab John, we go talk to Sergeant uh, Sergeant Major. Sergeant Major looks at me. And he's like, "You know what? You're gonna go with, uh, you're gonna go with our guys that we got embedded with with special forces up in Afghanistan." And he's like, and "He's be like, he's six like support, these will be huh? six month, like six month rotation or something, yeah. something like that." <coughs> so you got to Kuwait and they shipped you off to no. Afghan? No. <coughs> and I'm like, okay, cool. But what it was was is they were setting up basically. There's a satellite park, a step site, right? And the way it was originally designed, it was just going to be a bunch of contractors, and then they were going to have like a, a master start to be like liaison to like yeah. you know, to DISA or whatever. Yeah. And but instead, they had a captain that needed to get promoted to major. But in order for her to do that, what's the one thing a captain has to have? Command, right? So they create like a freaking signal company <laughs> right i like it like you literally just godded that <laughs> <laughs> and on the first day there was signal so basically so they were filling it with all these people from freaking that just got a, all of us reclasses that just like so just I, a, sl- a slop sandwich signal company so, well so there's a bunch gaps. of people that were already there that probably I, full of quebecs and romeos too no, it was all Sierras. <coughs> Though they had another company that had all the the Fox Trots and the and the um, Echoes. The was numbers. Echo still around then? Echoes, Echoes. The, the Did Echo they dissolve now. after Thirty One Series? Thirty One Echo didn't that go into uh, get dissolved when it became Twenty Five Series? No, well, Twenty Five Echoes. It's um, signal analysis. And yeah, but Thirty One Echo. Because we, I had, thought worked on like, like. Uh, Radios and MVGs and other electronics Maybe. and stuff like Maybe. back in the, the day. The, the, I think the one I was getting, they just created it. It was like 25 Echo. And, um, you know, we actually, okay, what it was, they go, the guy's got like a, like, not like a spectrum analyzer, but they got a way that you can see mm. how the, the spec Annie. The it's a spec the, Annie. It's not a spec Annie. You can like see the word. No, I'm saying you said spectrum analyzer. Like that's too well, long. You, it's do, a spec Annie. This infantry dude didn't know how to use it. Right? Okay. And so I'm in, I'm like new. This is, this is a, a couple years after the story I was just saying, but we're like out in the field. Actually, I told Brian this, this is like, so I go in the, I go into the talk and I'm like, Andy's like, Andy's like, his guys are down here. We're up here. Right. And there's this LOS shot. And so I'm like, Andy's like, there's nothing we can do about it. We're not going to be able to get connectivity. And I'm like, okay, what? So I go into the talk, and we got this new infantry cat. This infantry class is reclassified. Just do a V antenna? Just to 25 Echo, right? And so I go, hey, man, show me what you can do. 
And he's like, well, here we go, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, I want to see Andy's. I want to see what Andy's like, his location, how that Edmonton is, blah, 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 this and this and this. And, like, all of a sudden, this, <laughs> this single major so-and-so comes over. So everybody starts getting in on it. I'm like, okay, fuck it. So I walk out of the talk. I, like, look at Brian. I'm like, here, this is what I want you to do. Fucking blah, blah, blah. I grab the fucking phone. I call Andy up. I'm like, hey, dude, you're going to do this. Blah, blah, blah. He's like, dude, it's not going to work. Uh, I'm like, it's going to work. He's like, it's not going to fucking work. What, I, what were you guys using? What were you trying to do? We're just doing LOS. Is this an LOS shot? Just line of sight, to just on a hill down the valley or whatever. Yeah, well, it was kind of like on a, yeah. It was on like, a he decline. Was, he's, we're like here and he's just like down here kind of. Like, How far apart were you? Probably about 10 miles maybe at the most. Okay. So he's like, he's like, uh, he's like, it's not going to work. I'm like, it's going to work. And he's like, he's like, it's not going to work. And I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, he's like, He's like, whatever, dude. Who's the Romeo here? Who's the fucking Sierra? I don't he like, did not you? drop. Yeah, I'm like, let, you uh, know our jobs are pretty much the same. Yeah. For, so anyhow, I'm like, okay, really, Andy? This is this is this is the part that like like looking back now. So I'm like, I'm like, okay. So I'm like, I go, you guys ready? Blah blah blah. Brian, I'm like, give Brian the signal. Everybody does their stuff, and guess what? It pops in, and we got like connectivity. Andy's just sitting there. This is like Andy was. <laughs> this is what I mean. Was I don't think Andy was like, he wasn't prepared. Well, actually, this was a second field problem. So he knew I. He knew I had. Like my team was pretty good. To, like because we just stomped him. Sorry guys, if any of you guys are <laughs> on that first field problem. No, because uh. Don't because, be sorry. That's the fucking point. Like I know, but we're coming out because he wouldn't talk to me. on the first field problem. He refused to talk to me because we freaking outdid him. Yeah, no, no LT or commander likes getting embarrassed in any kind of game, you know, or well, anything. So, well, I, the, com the commander had to come in and goes, you guys, basically, it was kind of like, you guys need to stop dicking around on Facebook to each other, because we were just talking so much shit to each other, and, which is a good thing. It's a good thing. It raises competition. Competition raises, raises skills, and, you know, and it's good, it's good for everyone. Um, but, uh, the, the, but the thing about Arab John, though, was, yeah, I was supposed to go, but since they... It's just a bunch of the people in the company were from the schoolhouse too. They wouldn't let me go because they wanted to keep me there for morale. And I'm like, okay. I, I never, I never, we had, we had 90, 60, 30, 30, 60, 90 packets. Yeah. Training packets to do. I never finished the 30. Like, I never, <laughs> like, <laughs> like we never once did our jobs. And if I had the plaque, because the plaque, the first letter, I forgot about those. The man. first letter, every sentence on my plaque spells sexuality. Like, so when you look at it, so it's secretly. Like, yeah, I told yeah, him, yeah, I'm yeah. like, if there's, there's a way you can put sexuality in, you would into my, say that. <laughs> into my plaque because you do it. <laughs> and he's like, I'll figure something out. And then like service. And he's like, excellence. Yeah, <laughs> X factor. So when X X it was like extra. <laughs> extra because there's like so many like jenny was that's like, ridiculous they don't spell extra with an x so like 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 just fucking go with it girl <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry about it you it, they do if you're watching the show extra extra x i think they do anyway i don't think that's maybe extra. there is an e i think they're a little bit more what about the show x factor i don't know I, yeah simon that's just an x simon, what's his face from simon cowell yeah Douchebag. Yeah, he was a douchebag. Now he's just he too like, rich to even have he a temper. Did like he get his like best friend's wife pregnant or something like that? I would not know that type of pop culture. Like something like that. It's just it's like the, the just the dirtiest, like scuzziest. Like I'm him a and Ryan Seacrest and Paula uh, Abdul probably all had just massive orgies. And then I, I yeah, and then, I, was, I always thought Ryan Seacrest was gay. I mean, I thought he was like married or something. Yeah, he is. He is married, but you know, just because you're married doesn't doesn't mean, mean you're not. Oh, and you well, know, I was I was watching Godzilla. Yeah. And with the commentary. Oh, Godzilla is bi. Everyone on, on knows the, that. The commentary. Godzilla is bi as fuck. And they were like talking because Raymond Burr, you know, Perry Mason. Mm-hmm. They're talking on the commentary about how like Natalie Wood was like 17 and was engaged to Raymond Burr, and remind and me who Raymond Burr is. He was Perry Mason, the original oh, Perry okay. Mason. Oh, okay. Oh, damn. And so she was like, because he's, like, he's that's in, a spread. He was probably in a he's golden in the original, 50. the Ameri the original American version of Godzilla. Oh. So they like put put his stuff in there, but they're like, but he was like twice her age and everything, and then they were like, and. 
plus he was gay. And so it turned out that there's this whole, he would have all these, he, these crazy. Dude, that was so fucking con. Okay. First of all, do you remember the female major in my company before, or no, you wouldn't have known the female major at Fort Lewis. Oh, that the one. short one. Oh, she God. was the, uh, <laughs> she was the brigade sigo. She was the short white squeaky looking chick. Uh, at Fort, at Fort Lewis. Yeah. How would I know her? I guess you wouldn't. Um, okay, so there was this, and I gotta be, I'm, I gotta, I almost said a name. I'm not gonna say names for this. Anyways, um, <laughs> uh, her and uh, this warrant officer that was also there, this little short guy, um, during field exercises and everything like that, um, they they just fuck like rabbits, and they were, <laughs> and they were, oh, oh. I don't, I, I think they were both married, but. She had a contract marriage. That's the first time I even heard of it. <laughs> she admitted it to me uh, that she had a contract marriage um, with a with uh, with this dude that was like down in Texas or some shit, um, you know, and they were just collecting or whatever. Um, but also that she had a partner secretly, this lady, you know, here at home. So she was legally married to someone in the army. They were both doing it for the money and benefits. Neither one of them really had a relationship. She was secretly dating this chick, civilian, and then she was fucking a married warrant officer in our unit all at the same time. And wow, that's, that's dirty. It was juicy. It was pretty juicy. Wow. And she would often stay and sleep in her office uh, like almost every fucking night just so she could guilt trip anyone who uh, wasn't there at like 4.30 in the morning or – you know, not there till she would o'clock. sleep in her office She'd sleep and in wait? a sl- sleeping bag in the bear in the brigade fucking building uh, almost every single night. Uh, she did for almost a year straight during our field. Was exercise the, were the on offices post. like part of the building or like? Yeah, they were in, in the it was just a little fucking tiny office because they moved us to like small and it was a shitty old building on Main Fort. This was like an oh, well, no, they the, that brigade building stayed brigade building all those years, actually, okay. um, for the most part. But. Um, a lot of those buildings are, like, she was she was nasty but she uh my my nco uh i'll say his name sergeant gano eddie gano piece of fucking shit um yeah you'll not listen but if you are listening you, you are one of the few dudes that if i ever see you and i will knock you out without fucking any question <laughs> i will fucking God, hurt you have, <clears throat> anyways oh, he would I, I he say, fucked everything i'm pretty I, sure I he was s- fucking some dude in our company, uh, I'm not gonna say his name, but I'm pretty I'm pretty sure I know who. He admitted to me about fucking his aunt, and then tried to get to get me to fuck his aunt. Like when we were over in Eastern Washington, he lied, dude. He lied to me and said that's some amazing shit. No, right there. no, here's some amazing <laughs> shit. One day he goes, "Hey Harvey, uh, we gotta go to YTC, the Yakima Training Center, this weekend," and I'm like, "The weekend, really? Like I'm married, my wife's at home." Blah, blah, blah. I got plans this weekend. He's like, you're going to have to cancel them. We have to go do some, uh, you know, go over there and get some keys for our ANCD, you know, for this field exercise or, or and pick up some other shit and arrange some stuff. And I go, I really have to go. He goes, yes, you have to go. So what? I tell my wife I got to go out of town. I have to work the weekend. And then it's just me and him. And he's like, hey, uh, just in case we get an opportunity, bring your golf clubs. And, you know, and some civilians, but we probably won't. But just in case, you know, we'll see what we can do. And I go, okay. So we get in there. I'm pissed. We're driving in his vehicle on a Friday evening. We get all the way there. And he goes, hey, before we go get checked in, um, I'm going to take you to my aunt and uncle's. There's a little party. We'll stay there. And then once we get to the party, he goes, I'm just joking. We don't have to work this weekend. We're just here to hang out. I wanted you with me. Forced me to lie to me, and then we go golfing, and then we do mountaineer training there, and some other shit. Yeah, and then he tries say, to get me to fuck his sense. like forty-five-year-old aunt, uh, this drunk bitch, like white trashy bitch. And I'm married, and I'm like, dude, I'm I'm not gonna do this. And he goes, dude, trust me, man. He's like, honestly, I fucked her like ten years ago. I know it's my aunt, but whatever. It's not like it's my sister, or my mom. No shit said that to me. This guy, before he this was a Sierra, was before he was a Sierra, <laughs> he was a chaplain's assistant. I cannot make that up. He was a chaplain's assistant, oh my God. reclassed to Sierra, oh my God. and was the most corrupt, disgusting motherfucker. Oh my God. Cheated on his wife constantly, Dude. all the fucking time. So, oh, my God. So the... Uh, the, the Pretty sure the, fucked animals, the, too. The captain that they made the company for. So she starts... 
So we're all there. Just it's it's fucking like mandatory fun every day. Oh, gotta love that mandatory right? fun. Right. So, so what does she do? She starts seeing a major who dumps his wife for her. And then whenever they're having like mandatory fun weekend, like like little weird training classes or whatever, down at the USO, like or yeah, USO, like like she just be hanging around with her freaking fucking lover. <laughs> Well, we're all sitting here, like, you know, wanting to be home with our, like, you know, some of us, you know, some of the privacy, you know. That's misery likes company shit right there. It's just, it's just fucking, misery likes like, company. what are you thinking about? I mean, just because you're a, Your tax dollars going to work, ladies and gents. Oh, well, yeah. And then, so, Kid Rock, it was Robin Williams, Kid Rock. And a new up and coming actress named Scarlett Johansson. Oh shit! And I wanted to go see Robin Williams. Hell yeah! For one. Hell yeah! And then I want to see. Yeah, I want to see Scarlett Johansson because she released a CD. She was there because she released a CD of just Tom Waits songs. And I'm like, well, that means she's cool. <laughs> so I wanted to go. Yeah, and then, but somebody was like some stupid lieutenant at one of the other companies. It wasn't even part of our, you know, unit. It wasn't even part of our company. How come yours is red? I want a red one. Uh, that's his phone. Uh, yeah, so I couldn't go because this this because I had to go to this farewell party for some douchebag. I don't even know. Mine's not on. No, are you saying my mic hasn't been on and recording this whole time? No, it has. Oh, okay. No, it has. No, it has. 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 Because that would be hilarious. Can you hear me now? 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 Did you see my most annoying video? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I haven't video. logged in a f- in a few days. I just, just like, can you hear me now? And it's just like the same images <laughs> over and over <laughs> over and over again uh, that's knowing all, okay i got you now you're looking for trollers huh <laughs> no i'm like yeah you're fishing for trolls <laughs> well after you said that thing is like some guys is like what the fuck's going on it's He's just, like it doesn't make any it sense they're any like s- it says bad graphics and <laughs> <laughs> and fuck you <laughs> like i don't care i don't think it means i don't think it matters anymore. <coughs> i've been watching i've been watching veep though <coughs> with uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus. She's the vice Are you person. shooting porn in here? Yeah, this is definitely like because you could porn setup. You could do some cosplay oh, with I all your posters. I could totally if I wanted to exploit myself. I mean, it is if practically I wanted, my if property. I, wanted, I think we need to use it to make some to porn like, money. If I wanted to like commit even more psychological trauma upon myself, then I think yeah, I think this is definitely what I got to go for. Yeah, okay, we'll get off that one real quick. Um, hey, so... Did you watch Seven Samurai yet? No, I knew you were going to fucking just ask me that. Well, yeah, because that's... See that right there? Yeah. That's been sitting there for you. Which one's... Okay, this is the next one after Sam, Samurai, Seven Samurai? No. It's, the Hidden Fortress. Well, I found it, that's so... That's the one... Well, 1958? Watch it and Hell you'll, yeah. you'll, see, you'll, you'll see that it's actually... Okay. See, and then we got, got these right here. Oh, we got a table read right now? If you want. I mean, that's why I spent $400, excuse me, $800 on these microphones. Okay, time for a table read. Am I Jerry or Rick? Uh, I'll be Jerry, you be Rick. Okay, let me read the top first. Asshole. What? Rick. That's all right. I can pull off a Rick. What do you mean? Snap into character. I'm joking. I'm joking, dude. Well, I think I'd be. I play a better Jerry. Well, because Rick's supposed to be like the everyman. (laughs) You're like great shape, dressed to the nines, (laughs) average height, Caucasian. Yeah, you're the better Jerry. Okay. 
Meanwhile, I'm 45, glasses, IT nerd. I wear cargo pants and a collared shirt with the company you, logo I did give you glasses. on my left breast. All right. Okay. Okay, so on the, okay, interior executive office day. On the wall, clocks for each of the five major time zones sit above three monitor sit above three monitors show CNN, Bloomberg, and C SPAN. Art memorabilia line line the other wall. Where Jerry, fifty, average height, Caucasian, great shape, dressed to the nine, sits at a desk with a computer and virtual assistant speaker, two plush seats paste the desk and there is a small bar to the left door flies open rick 45 glasses <coughs> it nerd he wears cargo pants and a collared shirt with That's the company me. logo for valkyrie on his left breast jerry stands jerry there he is the man of the weekend my award-winning look-alike rick rick walks across the entryway to the office of the office to Jerry. Rick extends his hand. Jer Jerry pulls him into a bear hug. Sir, this is an honor. No, Rick. The honor is all mine. Now we can get to work on the future. Jerry releases Rick from his crushing bear hug, puts his hands on his shoulder. It's finally happening. Everything is falling into place. Jerry drops his ha hands and walks to the bar. Jerry continues, you like good scotch, don't you, Rick? Uh, yeah, I, I guess, but it's 11 in the morning. Nonsense. It's always a good time to, cel to celebrate, especially since this is the beginning of our union. Jerry drops two cubes of ice into a, in, in, into a couple of rocks glasses, then fills them with some scotch, walks back to Rick. Our union, sir? I thought you wanted to see me about the VWS protocols my team has been working on, as well as the fiber rings for the cloud services division. Jerry hands Rick his drink. No, Rick. The cloud is fine. I'm promoting you. This is going to be your office. My office, sir? I, uh... Rick, I thought Samantha went over all this with you last week. She just said you were looking forward to me participating in the company cosplay look-alike contest this weekend and that you were eager to see me today? What? So you have no idea what this is all about? No. That idiot! Rick, I don't like getting people fired but that new girl. I just don't know. Sir, Samantha has been with you since the beginning. You based Samantha, our company's virtual assistant, after her. That really is no excuse for not informing you about what is taking place right now. And what is taking place? Jerry puts his hands on Rick's shoulders and leads him with their drinks to the window that looks out onto downtown. I'm going to kill the Rick Miles that you are now and turn you into me, Jerry Blake. Uh, say that again? I can't be everywhere at once, Rick. Now that Valkyrie has come from, from being an online bookstore to the largest seller of everything, I am worth more than God now. The U.S. Department of Defense leases server space from the Valkyrie cloud. All this growth, you, all, all this growth, you, you, it's staggering, and I need to grow with it. I need to be everywhere. I need a team of me. A team? Rick, what do you see when you look out this window? Uh, the city, the skyline, the people going about their day-to-day -day routines. I see thousands of customers, each one with a Valkyrie account. They are, they are dependent on me now for their Pride streaming subscriptions, their audiobook subscriptions. Valkyrie ships 8 billion packages out every year. I am the richest, most influential man in the world. Sometimes, Rick, I think about it all, and I just stand here naked, drinking scotch like this, and I just masturbate until... Jerry points to a dry, <laughs> dried smudge on the window. I ejaculate onto this window. It's as if I'm transcending, becoming more than human, 
becoming more. Jerry looks out out the window. A tear comes to his eye as they both as they both both go suddenly <laughs> vacant, like Tom Cruise. Jerry snaps out of his trance. Jerry snaps out of his trance, downs his scotch. Awkward silence fills the room. Did you say Tom Cruise? Jerry rubs his eyes and, st- and starts for the bar. Don't you see? If I make more of me doppelgangers like you, I will never die. I will live forever. This Jerry ba- Blake will die like a version of Rick Miles will perish today. But the real Rick Miles will live on as me. Rick takes a sip of his drink, looks at the s- <laughs> looks at the smudge, looks back, looks back at Jerry. Sir, Sir oh. I'm sorry. Have you lost your fucking mind? Jerry, mid sip of his drink, shakes, sh- er, shakes his head, then laughs. Seems like it, doesn't it? No, Rick, I'm quite sane. Jerry finishes the last of his drink, sets the glass on his desk. Rick seems frozen in, sp- in place. His hand, his hand holding the glass, starts to tremble. Rick suddenly starts to speak. Sir, I'm, I'm sorry. This, well, this is a lot to take in. I'm not quite sure how to respond. Jerry puts his hands on Rick's shoulders, smiles. Just say yes. The two look, I, the two lock eyes for a moment. Jerry lets go of Rick, takes takes Rick's glass as well as his own, and walks back to the bar. Actually, it doesn't matter if you say yes or no. The plan is already in motion. Jerry drops the glasses off, walks back to Rick. My team found a body last night of a homeless person. That's a 90% match for the bone structure of your face. Rest of it will be easy to fake. Sam can erase... can. Sam can erase and change whatever. She is quite brilliant. R- Rick, Rick, about to, Rick looks like he's about to vomit. Stumbles over to, stumbles over to one of the plush seats and sits down. Mumbles to himself. Is, is this happening? Is this you oh, fucking cock blocker? I get, I get so caught up in it. Is this happening? Yes, Rick. This is happening. You are going to be the tip of the spear on this project you will take over this office while i help set up shop at our new palo Al- at our new palo alto location wow i didn't know i wow okay <laughs> jerry walks back to rick rick looks up at jerry but he's looking through jerry in a few more minutes the only family member you have your father will be notified and your life as rick miles will be over and Valkyrie will be the only place for you. Rick blankly look, looks around the room, suddenly panic-stricken, then back up at Jerry. The, f- the fluidity of the screensavers on the, on the bank of monitors behind Jerry shifts colors from orange to blue. Just calm yourself, Rick. It's all going to be okay. We got this. R- Rick, still lost in thought, swallows. His voice begins to crack. I didn't agree to this it makes little difference now you don't it, you don't play along you your background your whole your your whole state of being will be erased you'll see rick is covered in a flop sweat he is panicked his eyes dart around the immediate area he sees a heavy he sees he sees a heavy plaque on the on the desk he grabs it and starts hammering it against the window very very good rick hammer away i i i leave that out on the desk just just to see how long it takes for you to pop your circuit i just rewrote this that's why it's not making much sense rick slides down the window he pants a little bit and starts to cry for a second then he looks up at jerry what gives you the right you son of a bitch what gives you the right to fuck with our lives like this? Oh, bravo. Jerry starts clapping mockingly to Rick.
to store their media. I need to rewrite that whole part. <laughs> the U.S. government rents space in me to store their secrets. So it's kind of cool to have a few deviant ones of my own. I just like watching what people do when they... And that's all I got. Jesus Christ, dude. I love it. Okay, I need to <laughs> Poor re- Rick. Can I... Can I... <laughs> oh, I can't. Oh, shit, dude. I gotta... I gotta go soon. Where you gotta go? We're taking off to go meet some... Uh, we gotta go meet some of uh, Melinda's friends. And they live off Tipo, Tipu Road or whatever. Tipo um, Road? And Rainier. Tipsu. Tipsu. That's what it's called. Tipsu Road. And, uh, <coughs> and Rainier, close to where we used to live. We gotta be there by 6. What time is it? It's 5.15. Yeah. It's 5.15. I know. I missed my workout, you bastard. That's right. I was having fun. That was fun. I know. I was been really kind of excited to do when it. When did you write this? How long have you been working on it? Most of that, I wrote most of that 2019, really? July. Okay. So is this basically... So Rick, there was no idea Rick was going to be working for who he ended up working for. Yeah. And is, then this, is this basically, if, if I was to dive in heavy into that screenplay writing book or, or guild for... It's it's talking about how to build a scene and, and how to describe it and some of the I, concepts. I but think it this is does but if I could be lazy and just kind of use this format, then I just use it for the format. Then uh, I'm gonna I got some stuff for you. I gotta rewrite in this format and then. Uh, but we've read this in class. Did you? So the ending was a little bit better, but. Uh, At what, the, Rick or or? Well, the part because uh, the whole thing I. I that fuck whole, you! Fuck you! So the whole joke, the whole joke about him looking yeah, out, yeah, jerking yeah, off, yeah, yeah, because yeah. that's because oh I, him at Jerry. I got that from being on Barton Field during one of those big formations, <laughs> and you're looking, you know, when you see like you see the signal tower, yeah. And, like so, I'm just like, dude, do you guys think the general's up there right now? Just that's like, right, that's right, that's like right. just like looking out over at us, <laughs> like jerking off, like jerking off, <laughs> drinking scotch, and then so. Oh, God but then it. when we walked out of class, though, I got on Yahoo, whatever. Yeah. Right. This is when I was like really looking at the me- at, like whatever on the news, and they said that the bo- there was like the one scene that they deleted they didn't do for the boys, and they're like Homelander standing on top, l- standing on top of a building, jerking off over <laughs> the crowd of people, and then they ended up they ended up bringing it they used it at the end of season two. That's fucking ridiculous. But I'm like, I said, I remember sending it to Austin going, dude, dude. That's crazy. And he's like, dude, that's almost just, that's just like. So much plagiarism. Yeah, it's definitely parallel. Yeah. But that's what happens, you know. It's uh, when someone has a thought, that shit becomes, you know, it's in the cloud, so to say. It's available for people to grab that. That's why they say always wait till the day after to do like crossword puzzles in the New York Times or, or in a. Uh, because then the answers are out there. If you do it the day it comes out, it's harder. But if you wait till the next day, uh, data has shown that people complete them faster. And not looking up the answers, just that the answers have been thought of already the previous day. And so the information is just floating around the universe and you're, it's more accessible to grab. Dude, that's been like. That's an energy to it. So. That's well, there's been weird. Actually, with these microphones. That's real shit. As soon as I got off, I, I like sent a picture to the Cheeto. Yeah. I'm like, he's like, yeah, I, I love my sure microphone. I'm like, okay, cool. And it was like as soon as I turned on the TV, the first thing that was on YouTube, yeah, was sh- like shit for sure microphones, and I didn't. And that's why people, a lot of people, think that this is a simulation. Yeah, I know. Because that's an algorithm. That's that's. I mean, that's all that. That's ones and zeros. You could you could explain that in ones and zeros. Yeah. And that's fucking weird. Yeah, Rick could explain it. Well, maybe not just ones, but code. You know, you well, can I fucking think, definitely honestly, create that. I, I think the Rick, the whole, the leasing of the government secrets and stuff. Yeah. For AWS, well, VWS and this. I'm pretty sure I got that from Rick because Rick would go out to the, when we went out the field. Rick had like just stacks of like Wired magazine mm. and stuff, and I'm like, I was just thinking. Oh man, I remember that one. Yeah, I was just I was just thinking like, I, I'm pretty sure I got like it's kind of weird that. Even though it's not Rick, not really Rick. Yeah. Rick. Rick's a pretty hard charger. Like, <laughs> he's not sheepish. I was just using his name because it's it's a cool name. It's a good one. It's a good name. All the children love it. Speaking of children, thank you for tuning in this evening. Yeah. My mom's birthday. Happy birthday, mom. 
Shout out to How come you're not going up to your mom's? Uh, I'm seeing her this weekend. I'm going to my uncle's funeral, leaving in two days, and then... <laughs> Yeah, I know. That's something to laugh about. Yeah, great. Except <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going to a funeral and he laughs. That's that's who's in this room. Sorry, that's uh, <laughs> that's all right. That was a defensive. That's all right. I'm the guy that forgets his mom's past, and sometimes I'm like, oh yeah, well your mom's, and then I go, fuck, never mind, damn it. So I'm the real jackass it's in the room. It's so amazing, people. It's amazing. I'm still alive. It it really is. I gotta go. Okay. All right. Well, all right, this buddy. is this is uh, tune in next week when we got. We'll do one man incubator. And Actually, I'll and do. We'll one talk about the science behind be, behind death and laughter. We might, and I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll work on yeah the science between death and laughter. <laughs> or maybe we'll do she beast next week, and then we'll do that'd be a fun one. And I got one: the adventures of butt naked man and helicopter. Because you only have one line and one I man have incubator. Seen, I know what. Fuck you then. Because you're Jeff. You're Jeff. What the? I try and oh, Jeff Blank. That's his name. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll see you soon, everyone. Bye. Bye.